you know, let's say best case scenario, I win New York. I'm still going to do California the next weekend because, I mean, you know, why not? I, I don't really, I'm not really a believer in like, you know, what if you win New York and then like you lose in California and your stock goes down? Like, dude, you're, let's say you get second or third, you're still getting paid. You know, that's that would be, <laughs> but the, the idea of getting paid to do this sport is so crazy to me that yeah. it, like it's really exciting. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Blood, Sweat, and Gear with coaches Skip Hill, Andrew Berry. I'm Scott McNally, and today we are joined on our way to the New York Pro by Stu Sutherland. What's up, brother? Be Stu's with us. Hey, guys. Thanks hey, what's happening, man? On. Skip decided to show up today. That's good. Yeah. yeah, you know, I show up when I when I feel like it. <laughs> so I got to see this guy. I got to talk to this guy. See what's going on. So you've made a you've made a move. You're down in Arizona now training at Dusty's mm-hmm. old gym. What's a, is that Muscle uh, Factory? Is that what it's called? Muscle Factory, yeah. How do you like um, that place? I I like it a lot, man. He picked out a lot of good equipment for us, and the owner Lance also. He, he, he keeps on rotating pieces in and out for us, which is good. You know, he's excellent taste. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, I think um, Dusty Dusty's the one who is insistent on getting that uh, pendulum squad in there, the Atlantis one, and that's been, like, my bread and butter for a while now. So nice. I've been uh, hammering away on that for a bit. Nice. So what's been your your uh, your big focus going into this show? Like, what it, what is it that you want to bring? Because you're looking absolutely crazy. Andrew's grabbing some pictures. We're gonna put those up. I've I've seen a lot of people like you've created a stir, man. You know, there's a lot of people yeah. that are excited to see how you're gonna look. It's and it, it's been cool to see that excitement building in your mind. You know, what what is your vision for this? What do you want to see on stage? Well, uh, you talk about a stir, like, a, what was it, like a week and a half ago now? Uh, there was that picture that got taken of me and Hunter. Yes. And that caused a bit of a stir. Um, <laughs> I thought your and, response to that yeah, was my, spot on, by the way. like, Yeah, I mean, it's one it's one pose. He's, uh, you know, 11 weeks behind me in the whole dieting process. And, you know, he wasn't peaked for that show. I, I tried to peak for that guest posing. I wanted to look good because it was my hometown show. Um, so, obviously, a lot of variables there. But, you know, I, I didn't look out of place. And I was happy with how I looked next to him. I knew it was going to be um, an opportunity to, you know, look like I belong next to somebody who's really good. But, um, so, yeah, I mean, since then, my phone's kind of been melting, which has been distracting. But... Uh, I'm feeling I'm feeling good going into it. You know, I think uh, as of like a couple days ago, I flew up to Portland on last Saturday, so like three or four days ago. Um, and my coach Blue took a look at me in person. You know, and pinched my ass and all that stuff. And um, <laughs> you know, all, all the fat's gone. Basically, just got to do some chemical stuff at the end now, um, and you know, get dry and uh, it should be right there. So. Uh, if he's happy, you know, I'm happy. I'm uh, probably going to be like five or six pounds heavier, I bet, uh, on stage this year. Because it was like 246 last year. I'm going to be kind of low, mid-250s, I think. Um, so, yeah, I mean, for was it, it's like nine-month gap between the USA's and Tampa and this show. So that's a decent little jump there in that time frame. Um Absolutely. So I, I, I'm happy with that kind of progress there. <laughs> Skip, would you be happy with that progress? Well, you know, months? it's funny, and I, and I have to say this. I know I'm going to sound like the old head saying this, but am I the only the only one who's listening to him going, "Is this motherfucker?" chill is hell like he's just like <laughs> eh, just like i'm gonna roll you you well, know I, mean, I, I think it's because it's, it's got warm out with the uh, monday show and then he's been flying oh, to the Portland. monday show is not till next week yeah but he's got a lot going on yeah oh i am i'm I mean, chill plan by the way Where how about that <laughs> <laughs> fair enough fair enough but you do you seem very very low key and it's just you're just you're rolling with it you're just kind of very monotone and and, and that's cool i it's just i I don't know. I wouldn't expect. How old are you? I'm 26 now. Yeah, it's okay. Because I'm old as hell. So to me, you look like 19. And I don't mean that as a slam. I'm saying it's a slam to me because I'm old as hell. So when I see that, I don't expect you to be low key. I almost expected you to come on and be kind of, you know, remember, I've been, I, I'm very jaded with the industry. So I expect a, a yeah, younger. Too, actually. Com- 
I, 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 yeah, it's not too difficult to get that way. But it's very, yeah. I expected you to come on, baby, maybe be kind of arrogant, maybe a little cocky. But it's only been five minutes. I'm like, oh, this kid, this kid has his head on straight. And when I say kid, again, I mean no disrespect. I'm saying I'm old. So anybody under 30 is a kid to me. <laughs> yeah. Skip, you might be surprised to know that uh, his Instagram profile says mediocre bodybuilder underneath. Oh, it his, <laughs> see, so. XOXO, XO, so I already like him. <laughs> so in, in Tampa, there was like 15 or 16 guys there, and I placed seventh, which is right in the middle of the lineup. So hence mediocre, like you're middle of the road. Um, <laughs> mediocre at his first show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, first pro show, too. which well, was the it's Tampa. It's still a good way you know? to look yes. at it, though. And it's yeah. uncommon. I don't know, man. Like, the, everybody's – fucking everybody just gas himself up nowadays. I, I don't want to – look like an ass when i say i'm gonna win stuff and um then i don't you know that's embarrassing uh and you look silly and you know i don't know i i, I try to like kind of beat people with a punch as far as like the the banter and the shit talk and stuff and uh it, it i i think people appreciate that because it's a little different because we're in this sort of self-promotional environment where you know if you're trying to make money off of this sport like you do need to talk yourself up. You do need to create buzz, but I don't. I don't think everybody needs to be like blessing, you know. Um, <laughs> and like that, that drives me nuts, you know. And then you don't deliver, and you look silly. Yeah, um, they can under really promise, so under promise, over deliver. It's always <laughs> exactly. the route. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what, yeah, what do so you? I don't know. That's how I look at it. What do you attribute your progress to over this last year? Because yeah. it's not a lot of time to have made some really good progress. I know last time we were together, we talked about some changes that you were making to training. I think you, if I recall, uh, Blue was having you use more volume than you had in the past. I, 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 am I correct in that? I'm trying to remember what I, it was. I, I'm trying to remember when we did our last show, but he was... So I did change up my split for a little bit, like eight or nine weeks after the shows last year. Yeah. And honestly, I, I switched it back because I didn't really like it all that much. Uh, it it kind of, I kind of shifted more towards like more of a body part split. I was still hitting things multiple times a week, but like my chest focus push day would be like almost entirely chest stuff. I wouldn't do lateral raises on there. Yeah. Uh, whereas like what I'm doing right now, what I've done in the past, I've always done, you know, chest, shoulders, tries and the thing. Um, this is one example, but I mean, I kind of looked at myself like I like the way I had my split set up. I didn't really want to mess with it because like I put on 25 pounds between 21 and 22. Like don't fix it if it ain't broken. Right. Yeah, so there you go. Um, we we kind of just went back to what I was doing. Uh, didn't like go and ramp up drugs like crazy or anything. Um, I knew that you know, we were going to have a short period. So like, uh, we we're keeping an eye on my blood work, multiple points, and just making sure everything was decent, uh, enough to like continue pushing. Uh, and I did have shorter breaks in that time frame. I'll be honest. Um, it was like five, six weeks instead of like seven or eight. Um, but you know, with some of the meds that I've been taking now, my blood work's been real good. Um, all considered. And, um, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I knew that I really had to work on my arms and my back. Uh, I think my back still needs a lot of work. It's a little thicker, but I like, you know, Derek Lunsford, he's got like right under his armpits. He's got those crazy Terry's major. Yeah. They're just like, they're, they make him look super wide. I don't have anything like that. I, I really need to work on that spot. Uh, but I did put about an inch onto my arms. Yeah. See, like it's just, <laughs> there's just nothing there. <laughs> My lower lats are good. I'm, I'm well, I wouldn't say there's thick, nothing there. No, I'm yeah. laughing, and I'm laughing at his yeah. response. I am definitely yeah. not yeah. laughing at this thing, but his response is just like, yeah. oh, Jesus. Yeah. yeah, like, oh, God. I'm embarrassed to bring this to New York. Yeah. Like, exactly. yeah. <laughs> I'm 26, and I turned pro last year. I made seven plays in my first pro <laughs> show. <laughs> to dream, right, Skip? Yeah. Well, it's just, like I said, the humility is, it's it's so nice. And, and honestly, it's kind of a trend recently, and and as an old head, I'm kind of happy to see that because we've had a few of the younger guys on, and I'm like, oh, I guess I'm kind of surprised, which which makes me I need to check 
myself to to not just assume that people are going to act a certain way because they fit into this box that I have created or that I've seen over the last 40 years in the sport. But trust me, when you get older, you get a little jaded, you get a little cynical. <laughs> I'm close are, you are, are you with Hostel? Are you with Hostel Supplements? I, I, they sent me a t-shirt. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Gotcha. <laughs> I was like, I didn't know you were signed to somebody, but so, okay, cool, cool. No, gotcha. no, not. We're trying to figure that out right now. Um, oh, good. right on. Right Just on. I hope that works that. out. That could be Excellent. good. Uh, Excellent. Yeah, I'm talking to a couple different companies right now, but uh, you know, I'm not going to commit to anything until after my shows because I think you know if they go really good, then that's going to help me a lot. Um, so, yeah, just kind of hurry up and wait. And we're, we're playing the you know the the flirting game right now. I guess yeah. you can call it. Um, <laughs> what uh, you were cool. you were saying? Health supplements to to keep your health in check, or supplements to keep your health in check. Would you mind telling us a little bit more about that? Is that something you can talk about? Sure. Yeah. So, I mean, there, I've been on blood pressure medication for a while now. I was using lisinopril. Yeah. Like, to make lisinopril for probably two, two or three years now. Um, so, that, you know, I've had that in place. I switched from lisinopril over to um, telmasartan recently. Yeah. And I'm doing 40 megs of that instead um, because of some of the effects it has on uh, angiotensin. I think I, yeah. I don't remember all that. Crap. Andrew Pence and two separate agonists. Yeah, yeah. So you know, I, w I wanted to. I I remember. I think John Jua talking about how it can help you retain less water. Uh, I don't remember all the mechanisms, but uh, so I switch over to that. My blood pressure's been fine though. Um, I also uh, about halfway through last year, I've always taken you know you, you know your fish oils, your uh, citrus bergamots, all all the stuff that is helpful with cholesterol but yeah like consistently that is the only thing that's off on my blood work like my liver's fine my kidneys are fine all that stuff's pretty much fine even when i'm pushing like i got my blood work done like five weeks out and it was it was good um but my my cholesterol is always off so i started taking a statin um lat, like middle of last year um and that's made a huge difference like my my cholesterol has been in range even like peak off season throw in the kitchen sink um <laughs> in when i was when i was doing it last year so that's been very helpful and i you know i'm just going to keep that in as a staple now um i started off at 20 megs of a torvastatin which is lipitor and i cut that in half to 10 megs of a torvastatin and 10 megs of azetamide azetamide um which are both you know they, they're different kinds of cholesterol meds but um, I've been able to keep stuff much better in range. You know, at the end of a prep, they're going to be a little off, but yeah, you know, are you seeing? Is it like HDL has been yeah. low? Is that what you battle? Yeah, well, uh, my LDL was creeping up towards like the one twenties, one thirties. Okay, in off uh, season. HDLs, yeah, and yeah. my my cholesterol or my HDL has always been low. Yeah, but me too. I, I was talking to my. Um, my cardiologist because i got a uh an echo done not too long ago in december and it was good it wasn't like oh shit you gotta stop this yeah. um so that was nice but I, I was talking to him about like hey what should i do with this cholesterol thing uh and he said as long as you control your ldl and your total cholesterol and your triglycerides you're gonna be fine as far as like um what's it called atherosclerotic buildup in your arteries okay so uh and the the statin has helped keep my ldl like under control yeah okay um, i mean you know big picture here i'm 26 right i'm i'm abusing myself right now like i'll be honest and when you're 26 you can get away with that um mm -hmm. when you're skip's age you probably shouldn't even though he still does damn right you shouldn't <laughs> <laughs> no kidding no kidding but, you know, so let, let's say I get on stage, I'm 252, right? Uh, the heaviest I might ever get on stage in good shape is, like, maybe 255, 260. So, like, I, in the next few years, I intend to kind of taper down my usage pretty significantly. Because, like, it takes more drugs to build the yeah. muscle in the first place than it does to maintain it. And, like, I'm never off a plan. I'm always eating my diet. I'm always training and doing what I need to do, right? 
but you know, one or two years from now, when I got most of the muscle there, I just need to like bring up my arms a little bit or bring up my shitty Terry's. Um, then I, I don't need to be on grams of stuff. You know, you, you hear about like a lot of these pros who, uh, you know, open pros who are like, yeah, I, I take like a thousand megs of stuff in the off season. Like that, that very well may be true right now. Um, it's not how they got there most likely, but you know, if you're on like under a gram of gear in the off season, uh, cause you only need to put on like a pound or two in the right spots. Like that's, that's totally feasible. So they're not really lying in that sense, but, uh, that's kind of my intention in the next few years here. Once I got most of the muscle I need, I, I want to be able to back things off, be healthier, have like, I don't get fat easy in the off season. So like, I, um, I, my food stays high. Uh, my composition stays good. If I can like hover around like a really lean 285, and then go and do a 12 week prep and get on stage at like 260, yeah. 255, like just think about how much less stress that's putting on my heart and my yep. kidneys and like everything else, you know. Sure. Um, I just kind of want to get the the shitty unhealthy part out of the way sooner rather than later, and then. Once the muscle's there, I want to just kind of keep it. Uh, if that makes sense. Absolutely. Yeah. You sure you're not forty? It... I'm just <laughs> late thirties, <40s, laughs> early thirties, early Like you're an old he's soul mat- or something. I don't know. What he's a mature twenty six. I knew when I yeah, met no him. Shit. You know, at the uh, Tampa, we, we we were sitting together the day before he was going on stage. Cause I think it was two twelves in classic on Friday, and open was on Saturday. And we were just chilling. I was. I could tell right away he was delirious. way more mature. <laughs> Go ahead. I was, I dude, I barely slept in like a week and a half at that point. I was very glad your dog was there, though. That was, that was cool. <laughs> yeah, he's no longer with us anymore, unfortunately. Yeah. Oh, I'm um, sorry. Yeah, he passed away in November, oddly. But uh, anyway, so talk to us about New York. You know, like, wh- what do you see happening? Who are you excited to go against? You're part of the new crop. You know, we don't have like yeah. any of these typical, like Justin LRs, Akeem, you know, some of these other guys from the New York, you know, tri state area that typically do the show every year. You know, what are your th- thoughts? Um, well, I guess the like the big news from I guess it was yesterday is Carlos is out. Um, that was not something I was particularly surprised by, if I'm honest, from what I've heard about him. Um, you know, I don't I don't know Carlos. I've, I know that he's a very nice guy from everything I've heard about him, but um, I wasn't really surprised when he said he wasn't going to do the show. Um, he had a UC but, flare, like from the good. guys who are. Oh, is that what it was? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were talking um, privately after you know after I had sent that message to the whole group about getting on the show, and we were talking about some things that maybe he might need to start doing and some blood work and all that kind Mm. of stuff. So that's a shame. I I didn't know that. I didn't know that. But I haven't been paying attention to social media either. So he wasn't on it. He he like turned off his Instagram for for months beforehand. And okay. the, like the question was like, what does Carlos look like? Is he going to be in shape? You know, because if he is, like, forget about it. You're competing for second. Um, but you know, so so he's out, and I think now, uh, you know, we've got Tonio. Tonio's like, you know, freakazoid. He looks like twice as big as he really is, which is, I mean, he's probably going to be like two twenty on stage at most, right? But he's, yeah, probably just super bubbly. Um, I think structurally next to like me or Nate, he's going to be a little shorter and a little narrower in the shoulders. Hmm. But I mean, from the back, he's still super wide. I don't understand how, but his back is just like, it takes up so much space. Um, So he's really dangerous if he's in shape. Uh, Nate's obviously going to be in shape. We all know that. Uh, um, (laughs) uh, He was like, he changed. He's changed a lot in the last week or two. Like I was looking at his picture. He's like, I was like, man, he's usually like pretty conditioned by this point. And then like the last couple of weeks, it's just kind of like everything sucked up. Um, so he's going to be in shape again, obviously. Um, I, I think who else is on that list? Uh, Brent going to be peeled per yeah, usual Eric. hospital peeled. Eric. Yeah. Um, I think, He's going to be – so he's got, like, a couple of gaps on him, but structurally he's super wide, you know? 
so he's he's going to look much better in a lineup than he does just standing on his own because it just takes up a lot of space. Like his shoulders are super wide, um, and he looks like he's in good condition too. Um, but I, I mean, I guess the big picture here is like like you said, there's not a bunch of studs who are just going to drown us out and throw us into the second and third call up as new guys, <laughs> which is nice, you know. I absolutely. I, I, uh, I don't want to just get overlooked by like you know some top ten Olympian who's just going to mop the floor, uh, and then he's the talk of the show. It's a good opportunity for like you know us new people to kind of show our faces, um, and you know see what happens. I mean, I like I said, I'm I'm not going to promise anything. Uh, <laughs> so. <laughs> a good move that's a good move i think you'll be yeah. a good fit in at the the new york crowd too you know you, you you're a guy who has a lot of potential you've got a lot of muscle on you and and we know that that's what the new york crowd is going to want to see so i you got the hair too i think the hair is going to be part of the i'm just picturing are you this now it? are you keeping the hair oh hell yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice everybody loves it man it's it's like He's keeping the hair I mean, huh? blue is against it for a little bit but <laughs> is Rachel happy? <laughs> yeah. she, she asked me the other day when we saw your pic. She's like, "Is Stu keeping his hair?" Like, I like it, and uh, oh, yeah, so I was dude. like, I'll, "I'll ask him on the show for sure, for sure." It's amazing. Yeah, what, so um, keeping it, it's uh, it's it's part of the brand now, if you can call it that. Yeah, yeah. We, I can almost yeah. picture like a picture, like a silhouette of you. Yes, and with the hair, <laughs> like it would all be. That's how we know, had, you know. I've had the exact same thought. <laughs> We're on the same that should page, be bro. that should be your logo, you know, like when, yeah. when you get around to being a big Instagram star and creating for logos the branding. and yeah. yeah, all the branding and whatnot. So t-shirts looking at, and stuff. Um, yeah, looking looking beyond New York, do you have other plans this year? Are you going to do go do Cal? Are you going to go do Toronto? Are you looking at some of the other shows this season? Yeah, I'm going to do California, and then I was thinking about Toronto afterwards. But I mean, if I can't like make an impact of two shows then the third one's not gonna sure. really make much difference and i don't have a passport either so i i didn't uh, make a father. Oh, I, I think i, I don't know if there's enough time to get one this yeah Canada. but definitely yeah, i would work on it now for the future because i have a feeling you're yeah. going to need a passport you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it takes it's like six thing, or but... seven weeks to get one but i was going to ask this because yeah. last year you had the experience of doing the usas and then a week later and going doing the tampa so looking at you know new york and then a week later looking at cal how do you feel are you going to do things differently because mm. i think when we were talking last year you felt like eh, you probably didn't peak as well as you possibly could due to maybe different reasons i can't remember exactly what it was do you think it was the back-to-back -back peaking that affected that <laughs> I don't think it was the back to back necessarily. There was a couple. So I looked better at the USA's than I did in Tampa for sure. Um, but leading into Tampa, like Wednesday, Thursday morning, I looked, I looked better than I did the week before going to the USA's. But I screwed a few things up at the end. Like I got a, I got a carb up pretty hard personally. Like you know, hmm. sugary, junky shit right before I get on stage. Uh, so, you know, I was eating Rice Krispie Treats and rice cakes and, you know, bullshit, right? And uh, I wasn't salting it. So, you know, all my previous meals, you know, fish, rice, the usual stuff, um, I was putting salt on it just like I always do. And the morning of, I had almost no salt. And uh, so I was, like, pumping up backstage. I was pretty relaxed like usual. I was like, hmm, nothing's happening right now. And then I got out there and I was just kind of like – flat and because i was flat there was no pop to me and that made my skin look thicker and mm -hmm. i had a shitty tan too it sounds like a bunch of excuses i know but lesson learned um but i mean the fact that it was one week after the other was not the issue like i wasn't like hammering diuretics i could have put a, i think i took a quarter diazide before both shows crazy right um <laughs> so you know there wasn't a rebound problem there or anything like that uh I didn't know that I was going to do Tampa going into the USA's though, right? right. So I, I actually know that's going to happen this time. Um, Good point. And yeah, I, I that mean, was what was on my brain. Well, 
go ahead. Yeah, that's what was on my brain as well. I was wondering. Yeah, it's difficult to go into USA to go. Yeah, I'm going to be there in a, in a week at you know the Tampa, where here yeah. you know that yeah I'm good for both shows. So there may have been that phase shortly after USA's where you just were like, oh fuck, uh, I got to make up my mind real quick here, but I do have to yeah. get some pizza in me and get some sodium in me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, all right, fair enough. Yeah, no, that, uh, I, so I got I, that uh, wrong because that was after the Tampa. But anyway. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I, one other thing I forgot to mention uh, for Tampa was everybody at the USA has got COVID. Fucking everybody, including <laughs> me. And I didn't realize it until like Thursday night. You know, I started coughing. I was like, you know, eating and I couldn't taste anything. And so I think being sick like that didn't help either. Um, so, I mean... <sighs> Looking at the back-to-back shows, I'm not really worried about that. My body goes back to a baseline pretty quick. Just kind of go back to regular calories or, like, a little lower, flatten out a tiny bit, and then kind of ramp things up going to the show again. Um, I think, you know, let's say best-case scenario, I win New York. I'm still going to do California the next weekend because, I mean, you know, why not? I, I don't really – I'm not really a believer in, like, you know, what if you win New York and then, like – you lose in California and your stock goes down. Like, dude, you're still, let's say you get second or third, you're still getting paid. You know, that's that would be, <laughs> but the, the idea of getting paid to do this sport is so crazy to me. That, yeah. Like, it's really exciting. I, I don't know if it'll happen, but um, it's it's weird that I'm looking at that now when nine months ago I was like an amateur. Um, but I also have uh, my uncle lives in uh, San Diego, so he's going to drive up to Anaheim for the Cal, and he's going to watch me there. And then um, we got Memorial Day weekend after that, just going to head back home and kind of relax a little bit um, down San Diego, and probably say hi to Derek, Derek Farnsworth, um, and uh, just you know get fat after that, I guess. <laughs> Get to Phil's barbecue out. for me down in San Diego, please. Yeah, I think it's some of the best barbecue I've ever had. Phil's barbecue. Get to Phil. Your uncle would know about it. The lines out the building. It always has been some of the best barbecue I've ever had in my in my life. Insane barbecue. I will. I you don't will say that often. <laughs> it must be good if Skip likes it. You don't say that good, often. Yeah. He's kind of a food snob. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to give Derek Farnsworth a shout out because I don't I don't know if you're friends with him or if you're going to do some work with him or whatnot. But Nate went and spent a week out there with him earlier this year uh, and got worked on by him yeah, every single day. No kidding. Yeah, it, yeah. And, and honestly, I attribute a lot of the stuff he did with him to his back developments this year, like unlocking some muscles, teaching him how to um, do some prehab stuff before he trains his back. And he Nate even showed me some of the stuff which I use now. And no um, yeah, so like Derek is like, I mean, he's been in the business for you know, he's, I feel like he's been bodybuilding for like on stage forty years or something like that. You know, he, yeah, his first show was actually at our Vermont show. Well, was it really? Anyway. Yeah, back in back in uh, I don't know, nineteen ninety or something. I remember we went out to the San Diego gym, and I didn't I didn't even say hi to him yet. And he saw me. He's like, "You're a New England guy, aren't you?" I can tell. And I'm yeah. like, "Yeah, Derek, what's up, man? How you doing?" And I was like, "Actually, I know a fact about you." I was like, "Your first show was the Vermont show back in like nineteen ninety one." He was really impressed that I knew that kind of stuff. But, That's man. cool. Yeah, he's always been around as far as, as far as I've known. So that that makes sense. All right. Well, we didn't have a lot of time here, but we, we wanted to make sure we got you on, Stu, because we really wanted to catch up and, and just kind of see what was happening going into the show. We're all very excited for you. Yeah, I'm excited too, man. I'm kind of ready to get it over with, but as you can probably tell from my demeanor, I'm pretty relaxed at this point. You know, It's the best way to be. It's mostly done. Just got to like crawl over the finish line like usual, so. Yeah, that's a, pretty good. yeah, that's the best way to be. I can think of people I've worked with or even situations myself where I've just gotten so uptight and that's going to be the exact opposite of what you want. If you can maintain this, like just cruising right into the show, it's going to be it's going to be wild and you'll have the opportunity to pose on, you know, one of the best it's literally one of the best bodybuilding stages in our sport really is the New York Pro. So, I can only imagine it's going to be a really cool experience. I just hope Steve likes me. Yeah. <laughs> Steve likes early guys. 
Well, here's the thing, like, and I told Nate this too because Nate went and posed for him. Steve has seen every single top guy for like 50 years, right? He's seen he's seen Rami at his best. He's seen Phil at his best. He's seen Ronnie as his best. Like these guys have all come through his gym. So yeah. when like Steve just kind of goes, "Yeah, you look good," like. Don't take that personally. It, it, it just literally means that, like, you look good. Like, you, it, it's not a necessarily negative critique. It's not um, – don't read into it too much. You know what I mean? Because he's seen the best of all time multiple times in their best shape, judging at the Olympia, judging yeah. in his gym, et cetera. But, but anyway, Stu, if you need anything, he's I'll be there. Yeah, you know, if you just, just reach out. If you need okay. a, you know, if you need anything, i got my car and everything. So, all right. Oh, well, yeah. Well, well, we you, appreciate guys. Yeah, we appreciate having you here, man. Um, what is your your contact and stuff if people aren't following you? Where can they uh, follow you at? It's uh, My handle on Instagram is beef underscore stew, S-T-U underscore 97. Do you have people at shows yeah, and stuff going like beef stew? Do you hear that? Dude, yeah. People, start, people have started calling me beef stew, and it sounds really weird <laughs> to hear it in real life, but I, I did it to myself, I guess. So you I did. Get used to it. The last show we did with you, it was said with, I have to be pro beef stew. And a bunch of people knew who you were that way, too. So. Sounds ridiculous. <laughs> now, some things happen, by uh, you, but I'm telling you, from the hair, to the beef stew moniker, you got you got something good going here, really. Ride it. It's I'm going to ride it's it, it, yeah. Unique. Skip, good. are you saying he has a good recipe? Yes, yeah, a beef <laughs> stew recipe. It's a good recipe. <laughs> oh, God. All right. Mom for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we appreciate you tuning in. And, Stu, we appreciate having you guys for another episode of Blood, Sweat, and Gear with coaches Skip Hill, Andrew Berry, and Beef Stew. I'm Scott McNally. We'll see you soon.